Hey, that's a scoundrel. Probably geared to you. Sorry, what'd you say? He's a pillow biter, you know. The old, uh... Oh, well, I, I wouldn't know about his sleeping disorders or anything like that. I, but I'll tell you, I do think he's got some problems. Uh, alcohol and anger, to name a few. is Chris Abalo's podcast experiment and I am Chris Abalo. Welcome to the show. Joining me as special guest this week, you know him <laughs> as the as our, our resident uh I don't know what to call you actually. I don't know what the hell you are. <laughs> wonderful. It's coming wonderful. You're our Oh, that's fabulous. That's what I called you. You're the resident fabulous. Ah, that's it. Ah. Norman Trotter, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing. I should have. If, if I was good at this, I would have had a. There it is. There we go. Thank yeah, you. Wait, there Thank you. you. Yeah. Oh Thanks, everybody. Thanks for that. Lovely. Much better. <laughs> Ah, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, whether you're tuning in live or catching up with the show on iTunes or YouTube, we do appreciate that. And uh, please also follow the show at Kate Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Like the show on Facebook for various updates. We do appreciate that. And a reminder, this show is brought to you in part <laughs> by... What's so damn funny? Nothing. Keep going. Show is brought to you in part by audible.com. Wow. Why? Nothing. You love audible.com. <laughs> I love audible.com. Norman's had an audible account for like a week and a half. I've had one for damn near five years. And we love it. And for you, dear listeners and fans and friends, Audible, the world's leading provider of Ooh, audiobooks, wow. is offering you yes. a free 30-day trial to check out their service and wow. a free audiobook download. That is deep. So what you do is you go to audibletrial.com slash cape mm -hmm. and sign up for your free trial. Get your audiobook for free. Oh. Pick from over 150,000 titles. Yes. And... 30 days free to evaluate their service. Mm -hmm. See if you like what they have to offer, which again, Norman's a fan. He just joined. I've had an Audible account for almost five years. I'm thrilled to have them as a sponsor. And I highly, highly recommend <laughs> audible.com. Now, Norman. <laughs> yes. You're awfully giggly tonight. <laughs> I don't understand. Why are you laughing so much? <laughs> Nothing. No, there's something. There's got to be something. It's my personality. I just laugh. All right. Keep going. Sure. <laughs> so uh, you're here yes. in part because uh, we're going to chat a little bit about you. Because you forced me to? Yeah. Well, <laughs> here's the deal. Since he held me at gunpoint, people. Not at all. <laughs> Since you were partly uh, involved in the, in the group of uh, myself. Ah, uh, yes. And obviously you and John and Candace. Oh, John and Candace have already had one-on-one -on -one Episodes with me mm. during the first wave of Cape Cape 1.0, let's call it. And uh, I figured, well, people kind of want to know a little bit about you. By the way, if you want to check out John and Candace's one-on-one uh, -on -one chats with me, you can um, go to chrisabalo.com. Uh, Cape 16 is with John Karunas and Cape 20 is with Candace Feltz. It's very deep. So you can check those out. It is very deep. And uh, actually, you know, we should work on maybe getting those into the iTunes feed. As of now... The iTunes feed only has these uh, episodes we've been doing from the studio since Cape 32. We'll see about fixing that. Eh. We'll, uh, we'll get that together. Eh. Eh. But what? You don't want to hear those? Eh. You should. <laughs> ah, you will. <laughs> if you're not involved, you're such a Hollywood narcissist. What? Sometimes yeah, you heard on me. weekends. No. Not a weekday. No, you live it every hour of the day. So anyway, it's high time we talked a little about you because people want to know your story. You, I, let me tell you. I, I know you're you're not really on social media, 
You don't have uh, Twitter, Instagram, anything too like much, that? Too much, too much. Yeah. Facebook is enough, people. Facebook is enough. I'm with you, and that's why Twitter is my preferred social media platform. <laughs> I, I like Twitter a lot. And I've gotten used to Instagram because of, in part because of the show, and because it's it now has more users than Twitter, so I thought, okay, Does I guess it? I should give it. Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, it's something like three hundred thousand monthly active Ugh. users, and Twitter's two hundred and sixty. We talked about it in. Uh, they're just in photos January. of people. I know. Food I don't really get it. You know things. what's? As I've been using it more and more, though, you know what's funny? I'm what? and you wouldn't know this because you're not on Instagram. I've been getting spammed by like these Russian cam girl <laughs> sites. <laughs> Which kind of freaks me. I mean, I realize everybody probably gets them, but I'm getting these these girls I don't. like. <laughs> well, you're not on Instagram. See what you're missing? What Russian girls? Yeah, I should get there right now. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I know it's what you've been waiting for. Uh, yeah, it will be like a hot pick or something. And meanwhile, it's not a photo of me. I think I have two photos of me or something on my Instagram. I'm not really sure. And uh, it doesn't really matter. But I don't really post myself. But then I I check the profile just because I'm curious. Just because the name is random. And I'm not assuming it's a, you know, Eastern European name, but it's always cam girls. And I just read the, the information in like a, a stereotypical, like Bond villain voice where it's like, cam girls, you like Russian cam girls? Come, click, click, join. First minute free. 3.99 minute after. She keep top on until two minutes in. That sounds awful. I, well, that's how I read it because it amuses me <laughs> because it's just spam. Not like it's good for anything except fleecing people. <laughs> You are super giggly. I am not this funny. Even I know that. <laughs> and the whole concept is silly. Of Instagram or Russian cam girls? Everything, everything about <laughs> Everything <it>. is silly. <laughs> uh, but I get, I have people uh, tweeting to me, asking me about uh, your social media. And I've said, you're not, I say it on the show every time you're on. You're not on social <laughs> no. media. But you have fans. Leave me alone. But you have fans. Oh, there, that's, that's so sweet. There's a fan base waiting for you Stop if you it. decide to sell out like I did and get on Instagram <laughs> or Twitter, and, despite all the things you've said about them, because I said the same things and more not so long ago. And now I'm just an attention whore like it's everybody sounds, else. Oh my God, you are. I totally am. Every day Named a show after me. And everything. You did. Oh I my, did. Oh, my God. Right? I'm on it right now. What an egotist. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have a fan base. I All the time, I had somebody, actually a, a friend of mine, sent me a text today because he listened to one of the recent shows. Oh, it was the one we were just talking about. I think it was uh, Cape 37. We were talking about the snow getting one? snowed in. Yeah. yeah. And John made one of his classic puns, which was, uh, you mean snow series? Because can't start by going... <laughs> Shopping and a for piece groceries of died inside. And you, well, no, your response <laughs> without missing a beat was, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> so I got that sent to me in a quote John, you mean Snow Street's no, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> and uh, someone actually did tweet me just the, the phrase in regard to you Norman is life. So <laughs> you have fans. And I kind of get it because. Thanks, guys. Let's remember outside of the LA area, certainly, and, and New York, in between, there's. 40 something <laughs> other states. I don't know. I'm not very good at geography, but there's, there's, bunch, land. there's a bunch of other states <laughs> and people. I don't know. Th a lot of them don't have black people. A lot of them don't have what? gay people. How is that possible? And rainbows exist everywhere. People. <laughs> <laughs> so you're supposed to follow the rainbows. Is that <laughs> exactly. You're saying? You go to a gay club. I'm like, welcome. I don't it's know. If there are a lot of room. gay clubs in Mm, Minneapolis, maybe. At the end of the rainbow, there is. Not a lot in Indiana these days, but that's getting too topical. <laughs> but I think there's... Touche. I think there's a, a novelty factor for you because a lot of people aren't, don't get exposed to the to your perspective. So you, you kind of have that going for you, I at get, least I with, get that. with a I national that. audience. Yeah. I, think, I think that's part of the... And you're hilarious. That's You are... You see, for not being a performer, which myself and Candace and John are, you're not, but you're just hilarious... And when I told John and Candace you were going to be sitting in on the first show, which has now become a regular thing with the four of us doing uh, this show together, they were thrilled because like, oh, that's such a great idea. You have to have Norman come on the show. If he says no, let me know and I will make sure he... And you said, yeah, you didn't even hesitate, which is great. But not being a performer... Yeah, totally. And we enjoy getting together and talking. And uh, we do make each other laugh. You've not been laughing disproportionately. People, that place sucks. Tell them what happened. Oh, it's this was booze, nothing I like. Well, I like the liquor. But that's, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fucking liar. I told the skinny girls going, is your food good? And you're like, it's not good. And your tits suck. <laughs> 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 the 
This is why they tune in, by the way. <laughs> this is why middle America is tuning in. It wasn't good food. It took forever. Uh, uh, I was so angry. And the most disappointing part was you got double charged. They charged me double. You got charged twice. So for this. pissed. Yeah. They offered me nothing. There was no good meat of both kinds. <laughs> the drink Speak was for that. yourself. <laughs> the drink wasn't that great. It took forever. How dare you? At least offer me a penis or something. What the? They don't have those just lying around. Right? It's not that like kind a, of place. Back door, somebody like going, if you want the other meat, go back there. And like, cool. Well, you, but no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, no. Wait, hang on. Which, which, who does it meat, was? Which meat? Why? We don't want to call out any particular Hooters. I like Hooters, and I go to Hooters semi regularly. Uh, I don't want to call you, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, if my lawyer's listening, I am a fan of Burbank Hooters. I like going there. I like chicken wings. I like boobs. I like chicken wings. Boobs. Eh. Not your thing. <laughs> the chicken wings, by the way, it wasn't that great. What are the best uh, chicken wings you've ever had? The ones I made the myself. That's a stupid answer. <laughs> I'm black. I'm not I make some really good chicken. <laughs> I make some really good chicken. Hey, your word. <laughs> Touche. Touche. I have a you know what? N completely by coincidence, I have a fried chicken story we're going to get to in a little oh, bit. Oh, God. Is it Reese's? No, it's not. It's. I swear it's not, but it's funny that you mentioned that. because. And I even said, I wonder if this could be vaguely racist. I was actually joking to a friend of ours that the intro song I was going to use for the show was going to be uh, Brown Sugar. For today? Yeah. I, I thought what? that What's might... What's wrong with you? Well... Look, there's two. There's the Rolling Stones one, which everybody knows, and there's the ZZ Top one, which not as many people know, but I love ZZ Top, so it's going to be, got to have some of that brown sugar. It's going to change your life. And with the listeners, they, they have to agree, Norman. But I saw a Lisa Loeb song because I know you're a fan of Lisa Loeb. I do love Lisa Loeb. You do, which I had a whole list of things because I thought, well, what, what would make Norman happy? So there's a few, as now, now the music on my phone has kind of become a thing. Let's, uh, let's see some of the other, what was I listening to over the weekend? Tried, that's why I sent you a message, because I, I had a bunch of things narrowed down, but I thought, eh, I don't want to cater. Nothing I suggested. Su suggested. You suggested. said you weren't drinking. What? Never mind. Uh, I did have a drink before I came here. I thought this might have been, might have been a good choice. Because you're very much <laughs> You son of a bitch But I do know this song Fucking A This is a great I love In Vogue In Vogue I love In Vogue And I thought this might be a good choice <laughs> No This is a good choice if it's me, you, and John <laughs> What? Why? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute Let's explore that thinking a little more Why is it a good song If it's me and you and John There's two white guys and a black guy because it's a reverse Oreo? Yeah. Oh, all that cream, guys. It's not that great. What, this song? The cream. Or white guys. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I cut you to the quick there. You're like, well, you know. Well, I, I opted against that. So, I mean, it's, it's still here. I thought this would be, I thought this would be a good one, too. Because it, this suits you. It's a, yet another 90s flashback. You totally know this song. Don't look confused. I know all the words to this too. You don't no, not yet. It's it's coming. It's gonna get there. I'm gonna mime it to you. <laughs> you really? I, I know this song, but I, it's been a long time. It, it has. You wait, wait to. It's it's coming. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> See, this would have been a good choice, but I thought he might not. Yeah, that's right. You people. If you you're, you're people, <laughs> you people, you son of a bitch. You take that to your show. I didn't finish. <laughs> You people who are listening to this, the audio, you're going to have to go to um, check the show at YouTube. Uh, yeah, see, this would have been a smart one. I didn't go with it, though. I remember this song. Oh, what's this song called? What is this song called? Freak Like Me. Oh, Adina shit. Howard. 
What's this doing on my phone? None of your goddamn business. <laughs> That's everyone's answer. Should we let, should we let it play out? You want to? No, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, Norman, I'm very happy you're here. Thanks. I'm very happy we get a chance to finally sit and talk. So what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> let's let, let's get to know you a little bit. Where did, where did you start out? Where did you grow up? What the hell is this? Let's. I'm, we're. It's just you and I. We're just having a discussion. Just two guys sitting. Wait, here. is it getting intimate now? No, oh. not necessarily. I'm just. I'm just trying to have <laughs> trying to have a conversation. Everybody wants to know about the Norman. Speak Trotter, to me. Speak to me, Bala. The fourth. Where'd you start out? Where'd you grow up? I'm a Navy brat. That's right. I moved around a lot. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I, I bounced around. I'm used to. I'm used to like moving. But what about growing up? And states. <laughs> growing up, I'm. I was born in Washington State. <laughs> this song. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's get serious, All right, guys. That's enough. Born in Washington, moved to the Philippines when I was one. Moved back to Washington when I was like four or five. Lived there till I was thirteen. Then came to California. And then bed just bounced around. So I'm used to like moving from different place to place to meeting new people, which is why I'm so used to, I don't know, cutting people off, I guess. And not attaching yourself to people because you're used to having to say goodbye, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is this racist for me to put well, this on? <laughs> you are an asshole. Um, <laughs> I guess. But it's a good, it's a good thing because it's taught me to judge people very clearly. You son of a bitch. I like you. Take a little sip of the and make a few hands as I breeze through. I could do this whole song. Uh, you're, I don't know what's wrong with you. There's a lot. All right, that's enough. It's like the ghost of... The ghost of 90s <laughs> decades no, The past. ghost of John is inside of you right now. John's probably listening to this. John, you piece of shit. He's enjoying it. No, he's got, <laughs> his, he's got his James Brown on and he's... I hope he's in the bathroom right now with his headphones in, with his iPod hooked up to this, like... I don't know. He's just no. Off. He's he's, he is. Off he's right listening now. to. He's listening to. Uh, he has not only roofed himself again. He's jacking off to this podcast. He's going to be. By I the way, everybody. This, John. No, he's jacking off to James Brown. We covered that, so it's going to be blaring in the background <laughs> when he calls in later. Because thanks to my cliffhanger last week, so I, I didn't have a good enough answer for <gasps> these guys. Uh, that's right, uh, you dick. Yeah, John's going to call in later. We're going to discuss my guilty pleasure, if there is one. No, there totally is. I figured one out this week. Relax. So, it yeah, John Cruz is stupid. It would be good. You're never happy with anything I say. I'm, I'm happy. Anyway, so what are you doing in, in L.A.? In L.A.? Yeah. Because you're, you're not a performer. So what's your what's your deal? Oh, I have I prefer to be behind the camera in terms of the whole film industry thing. So editing, like being the computer story, putting things together. It's fun. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know all this, obviously. I'm asking you for of the sake course, of the, the yeah. audience. I don't like being in front of the camera like people think I do. I'm like, no. But you dig it now that face. you're here. <laughs> now you're a fan. Because you, you force me. And you force. <laughs> you're like, we're friends. We do it because it's point. great. But no, I don't, I don't find it very... It's, it's not your... I don't find it fulfilling. I don't get like a rush from being on camera or being in front of people. I got you. I mean, sense. I do like some attention sometimes. I'm like, hey, guys, look at me. Now look away. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a tease. That's what it comes Basically. down to. You're just, you're just a tease. <laughs> I went away one and I'm done. I'm done. Don't look at me anymore. <laughs> but you like it here. So it's you, you, you want to be here. Yeah, like yeah, I love LA. I mean, after moving from Washington State, it's a, whole, it's a culture shock. Well, yeah. But it's, yeah. I've been here for such a long time, I can't go back. With the weather, the people, it's, it's well... Because I remember, like, Washington was such a... Everyone was so nice. Mm. It was such a nice, nice place to live. Everyone's super sweet, super happy, supportive. Here, it's more about really fending for yourself. It can be very isolating. It's narcissistic, which can't... Oh, it's not always a bad thing about being narcissistic. And at the same time, it's very... You have to fight for yourself. No one's just going to hand you things. Which is, it's, it's a... It builds up your spirit. And if you can't make it, you're just going to crumble and be destroyed which happens every you see people coming here all the time going it's, oh, yeah. make it. it's gonna be awesome you're like you're gonna die <laughs> <laughs> you don't weak. know how difficult it is <laughs> no I mean, you have to, you have to be like, approachable nice but not you know you have to have a thick skin 
Sure. Well, and it's, it's, especially in the entertainment industry, just in general. And oh, you and yeah. I have worked on, I'm going to say the fringe of it, you know, not, yes. not as a jab, but we're, you know, we recognize no, no, our place true. in the ecosystem. It's true. We, it's, we have the opportunity to look in yes. at it and yes. see what people go through. And so when we get in ourselves, we know how to, how to act, which is, it's sad to watch sometimes. <laughs> it's also very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's cover the sad. Why is, why is it sad to watch, do you think? To see people try so hard and you know, you know by how their personality, how their mind works and what they want, that's just not going to work out. Mm -hmm. And you you can't tell them. You just, you can't tell them. They have to learn for themselves. So you, you watch someone literally break down and you can't help them. Yeah, you can't it's, because if you try, it's just they're gonna keep going at it, but harder, and to take a lot longer for them to realize the problem of the, of the situation. So it's once again sad yet entertaining. <laughs> in a in a Schadenfreude kind of way, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but you mean to watch people like, fail? We look at that person like hey, you're fucked because you're crazy, but keep going, <laughs> live the dream. But it's not going to work out for you. <laughs> we all we all know, we all know that person like that. We do, we do, we do, and it's sad. You don't want to. You never want to break anyone's dream. No, 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 no. Well, that and chances are they won't listen anyway, and that's why it's no. kind of interesting for us. And you, you shouldn't listen to anyone who's going to say you're not going to make it and like keep dreaming, keep going for yeah. it. But sometimes you're like, you should rethink your plan. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's been one of the good things because we we all met you and I and and John and Candace and uh, the, most of the people have been in here through our at a place of dreams. Well, you know, <laughs> through our through our showbiz. <laughs> work in, in various ways. Dreamland. Um, yeah. Well, there, there, was a, there was a point. There was a, a point. It wasn't often, but where <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny to think of now, especially for anyone who's been following the show, but where uh, you and I and Candace and John worked together. Didn't happen often, but it, was it a happened very a couple small, of times. It was a very small window. Very, yeah. very small. It was. It was. But we all, but, have the, we all, I think we all have the same mindset though, in terms of our goals. Yes. We want, we also know our own shortcomings, which is very, very important. And we acknowledge the work aspect. Exactly. A lot of people, like we, we did touch on it last week. A lot of people just think they're going to party their way to it and then they're going to get there and they're going to stay. Which is stay. possible. There are consequences, yeah. STDs, but it's possible. <laughs> And it's it's fleeting. It's going to go away just as fast. Okay, if, if not those STDs though, they're forever, well, guys. No, it's, <laughs> fame is fleeting. STDs are forever. Forever. I think that's the name of the episode. <laughs> I think we're going to top that. Pretty sure. We're going to get a lot of clicks. Oh uh, yes. People are going to think this is a health you. and wellness show. <laughs> Like, oh, what's this? Entertainment. Ooh, from downtown Los Angeles, heart of the entertainment industry. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Famous fleeting. STDs are forever. That should be an inspirational poster with a cat on it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Graphic designers who are listening, tweet Please it. make this happen. Tweet it to at Cape Pod or post it on Instagram at Cape Pod and, and tag it. Ah. Or email Cape the podcast at gmail.com. Please, oh, we want to see this. Yes. We want to see this. All right. I have a few, um, a few articles. I thought it'd be funny for us to go over. We, we haven't really done the news proper. We but haven't. I, I had three different articles sent to me today ah. from people. And I don't think the intention was, hey, you're doing the show tonight. I get to say I sent you such and such. I really don't think that was the, the legitimate mm -hmm. intention. But I thought they were all pretty interesting. And two of them are local news. Oh. So let's, uh, let's check out the first one. Um, we, we were talking briefly before we went on air about some uh, dietary stuff. Here's an interesting one a friend of mine sent me. Uh, curious if I knew anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, this is from Playboy.com because my friend reads the articles apparently. Mm, and deep. We tried LA's latest trend, the frog poison cleanse. <laughs> Ready for this? No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's it's coming. God a nickel for every time. I, anyway, LA. Cambo is a cleanse people in LA are talking about and using. It is a South American practice where the toxin of an Amazonian tree frog is burned into human skin for its purgative effects. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It isn't officially classified as a medicine, but a growing number of people are practicing cambo in small group environments for its health benefits. Playboy's Yoonj Kim takes the cambo for herself in a session with Simon Scott, a practitioner who learned the process from native tribes in the Amazon. While her, expect, uh, yeah, while her body expectedly purges itself of the poison... 
What happens to her face is completely shocking. Find out what happens and how she felt afterward. And there is a video. I haven't watched the video because I don't want to know what happens to her face. Have you heard about the frog poison cleanse? No. This is, neither have no. I. No. Sounds horrible, right? It sounds like healthy cocaine. It's healthy cocaine. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think this is healthy at all. It's I think like, this is like, hey guys, oh. I think this is <laughs> this is rich people shit. This is bored rich people. <laughs> Because it, who's like, uh, well, you know well, what? How do you get the frog in the first place? Raw juice place? just isn't working for me anymore. <laughs> I need some, and I've tried some the, frog poison. There was, there was a broth diet kind of recently where it was all soup. That was a thing. I heard about that. <laughs> where you just have broth. From soup to frog it's, and out, like, poison. Now it's gotten a frog poison. Well, no, I think it's really just bored people with nothing else to do. Like there was a thing back <laughs> in. I, um, really, I want that job. What, to test Can the be, frog poison? No. To rub it on people's rich, skin? Please. <laughs> if you have money, give it to me. Uh, well, I, well, my friend sent this to me and I read it. I compared it to, there was a, um, a, a town in the great state of New Jersey, uh, near where I grew up, where a couple of years ago, there was um, a bunch of bored housewives were shooting heroin into their ankles because they didn't have anything to do. Their kids were in school. They had nothing to do all day. They didn't work. Respect. You know, kind of an affluent town. <laughs> And so they started doing heroin because they were bored. I think this is the same thing. It's that like, we're bored. That sounds like the greatest show in the world. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't want to land in Just the, sh the shenanigans that ensue. Like kids are in school, sweet, uh, yeah, <laughs> smacking their ankle. Let's get crazy, guys. Yeah. Hey, girls, let's do this right now. Kids All are right. in school. We got eight hours. Let me get my vein up. Hang oh on. my god, awful. I don't know, but that's one of those things where I think this is this is people who are bored. But if you can afford cocaine as a bored housewife, can you just like fly somewhere and like go shopping? Oh, that's. I don't, there's so much better ways to use your money. <laughs> I don't understand. So you want to be someone's bored Buy some housewife? Shoes. I would actually save up money and have a second house somewhere and be like, "All right, kids, I'm going to the other f house. And just live." <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand it either. I thought that was. I don't know. <laughs> I, that's it. That, that, that makes you sad. Does it? It makes you so sad. Well, because you're stupid. It's it's, stu <laughs> it's 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 rich people. Let's move on from that stuff. one. Yeah, that's let's stupid. move on from that. Let's get let's go over the Frogs. chicken story. What? Because this is this is important. Since oh. I mean, look, Ooh. we can all acknowledge is that this. Deep? Um, as far as mileage goes, yes. Glad you brought that up. Don't be gross. Canadians make two thousand mile trip for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Ready? Yeah, you are. I can tell by looking at your face. Lutfi's son, but from, what the hell is this? I don't know. 2,000 miles might seem like a long way to go for fried chicken. Two men from Canada who took their sons on a journey to the original home of Kentucky Fried Chicken say it's a trip they'll never forget. The Times Tribune reports this is a third trip to the Harlan Sanders Cafe and Museum for Brian Lutfi, one of the fathers who piled the four sons into a van for the 34-hour pilgrimage from Montreal, Quebec. His tales of earlier visits inspired the trip. The friends left on Thursday, traveling to Colonel Sanders' birthplace and burial place before arriving at the Corbin restaurant on Saturday afternoon. For three of the sons, it was the first time they had tasted KFC, and 10-year-old Jesse Jana said it was, quote, delicious, exclamation point. Is there anywhere you would drive 2,000 miles to get their food? Number one, it's called a plane. Take it. <laughs> it's quick. It's nice. Montreal has an airport, don't they? Number two, it's called oil, some flour, seasoning. You just plop it in there, fry it itself, fried chicken. I don't know. I, I think it's, it's a strange concept, right? I think it's the brand. It's so weird. No, you're you stupid. Don't th I think it's the brand appeal. Don't <laughs> no. you think so? For someone outside the country, they're like, I would love KFC. I believe they have KFC in the UK and McDonald's. It's just like they have a lot of chicken. Anyone can make it. I don't understand. <laughs> I what we want to know is who's going to make the 2,000-mile trip to Norman's to try his chicken, because apparently it's better than KFC and Hooters. My chicken's amazing, by the way, number one, because I can make it. Is that a euphemism? I don't... Never mind. <laughs> like, what's that supposed to mean? The listeners get it. I don't get it. Do you get it? You make good chicken. Uh, I understand. What's the dirty part it's of fine. making me fried... Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's all right. I don't get it. Hey, fried chicken? Hey, I don't is like it my me. butt? <laughs> Is it my butt? No. <laughs> but now that you brought it up, no, I'm kidding. It? <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> We're moving on. <gasps> oh, Norman. <laughs> it's been, uh, I know you're not a fan of the show, even though you're on it, but it's been a uh, 
lingering theme lately with uh, this show, which what? has been KFC. Uh, no, wait. no, 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 Carl no, no. Jr.? We've tacos. No, what the? Calm down. We have uh, we've talked quite a bit about um, the hustler store in Hollywood. Have you been? Just say yes. You no. <laughs> You're terrible at improv. <laughs> Awful. I have not been to that place. Why would I go there? Because it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. You've never been there? Just to look around, it's a good time. No. Yes. It sounds like an awful time. Why? I don't, why would I go there? Because it's funny. No, it's not. Yeah, it really it's is. It's like Hooters all over again. We no, it's buy not. things again. Ugh. Listen, there's... What? There's, What's there for me? I, as spoken about on the show in previous weeks, there were penis lollipops that they have that... Um, Listen. I've been purchased. Our friend Sherry bought one. It better one be big. And raved about it. It'd be cream spitting in my mouth. I don't know. That doesn't, that doesn't appealing to me. Well, interesting follow-up. Is it delicious? Well, Sherry finished it now as type 2 diabetes, so it's pretty sizable. <laughs> that was awful. Not really. Uh, <laughs> you really know how to run with stuff. Man. <laughs> that was awful. All right. Well, this, is, this was sent to me. Um, I can't. The link isn't working now, but I'm going to pull it up because... Um, it's interesting. You know that obviously Sunset's being renovated. A bunch of stuff's closing. No. No? What's the matter? You not going to Hollywood? No. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm <sighs> old. I'm seeing Bourbon, guys. Yeah, Norman, by the way, <laughs> he doesn't have, as we talked about, social media accounts, but Norman next week is turning 30. Oh, fuck you, Apollo. So April 14th. I'm excited about it, though. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to uh, turn 30. Raise one for, for Norman. Uh, don't raise me one. Send and me money. <laughs> where they send it. Don't give out your address. I'm dead serious. <laughs> send it to Chris people Apollo. Gonna, people are going to mail send you fried chicken. People. <laughs> no. Do not mail With presents here to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we like it here. <laughs> send send Hustler money. Hollywood gift certificates to the following address. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> do you remember that when you used to have to write in to get stuff in the mail? For more, you know, the address would come up at the end of the show or the commercial. It was always, well, I did all the time and it was always like, I did not send mail to New York. They Why probably didn't have that, that in Washington. That's awful. Because they didn't have internet. How are you supposed to get stuff? Eh, forget it. <laughs> You're not that old at all. Anyway. We are not that far apart in age. Shut up. No, I'm totally joking. So, um, anyway. Just to, just a quick uh, recap. Yes. A uh, bunch of stuff on the Sunset Strip because mm -hmm. everyone regards Sunset as being dead, uh, as oh. being demolished and yes. then turned into apartments, condos, et cetera. Sexy, yes. No, no, not at all. I don't, I don't anyway. Know. Was it good? Uh, so the news, this is according to uh, page six. Gwyneth Paltrow has purchased a prime piece of Sunset Strip property from Larry Flint <laughs> and will replace the publisher's sex store with a high-end nightclub, sources said. Flint's Hustler Hollywood has been peddling sex toys at 8920 Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood since December 1998. And it's a good time out. The building is an escrow, and the Hustler Hollywood store will be moving to a new location in Hollywood later this year, Flint's rep Arthur Sandoz said. The current location will remain open until that time, which is good because it's a good time. Paltrow and business partner Gary Landisberg quietly made the deal recently with plans to replace Hustler Hollywood with a super high-end restaurant and night spot, The Arts Club, TMZ reported. That was the article I was actually trying to pull up. The establishment will be modeled on similar clubs in London and Aspen, Colorado with expensive membership fees to join, ready for this, at least $2,000 and another $2,000 in annual dues, according to TMZ. There will also be a strict <laughs> dress code. I uh, appreciate Gwyneth Paltrow so much. Why? Because That's... she doesn't know how people work. <laughs> Now she was raised such a way where she doesn't understand. There's a part of me that's jealous. <laughs> How do you feel? Where it's like, why wouldn't people want to want to join a club that's two thousand dollars? Why wouldn't they want to go to that it's in like West Hollywood? It's like an alien trying to pretend to be a person and trying to like <laughs> <laughs> like become like a person. She like has a like a flesh and face mask on. It's not real. So it's like Men in Black. She's just masquerading as a human she being. She is. She is. And it's hilarious. There's a part of me that's jealous. If I'm being honest, <laughs> I'm kind of jealous of her just being her completely life. out of touch. Like to say, like she is out of touch. I still, <laughs> she's beautiful. <sighs> she, she works out hard, but she doesn't. Do, <laughs> she doesn't understand. There's like you know lower class, middle class. And she's never experienced 
those two classes, so she doesn't get it. And so when people complain, she's like, I'm trying to help people and understand. You're like, no, bitch. <laughs> You're trying to help rich people. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you need to stop. Do you think you don't go over there as we establish? You don't go to West Hollywood. But do you do you imagine I'm a, I'm a bad gay. I don't get to West Hollywood very much. That's I wasn't gonna bring that up, but now that you did. Oh. Do you think anybody in West Hollywood is going to pay two grand to go to a club? Yes, what's wrong with you? Yeah, you think? Yes, of course I do. Wow. <laughs> now now what with her name in LA, of course who they're going to they're going to. Have to, of course, say they've been there, have to uh because they can. You think? Yeah. I, I think her name would have a, well for for people like for the underlings people like love us. Gunna Paltrow. People love Gwyneth People love what she stands for. Yes. Do they? She's still big. Her website me, does amazingly well. She has a big following. She I, does. I, but I think there's a certain. I think there's a certain stink on her. I'm not putting her down. No, there I'm is. I'm just saying there are people who are way put off by but her that and, thing and is, things it's like those this. Two classes that are there separated. So on one side she's praised, other side she's put down upon, but as long as she's the one side that's praising her, that has the money, it's fine. The poor people hate her, and the rich people love her, so she's fine. <laughs> so it's like a politician <laughs> exactly. catering to the... The poor people hate her all they want to, but the rich people love her. <laughs> so what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> What's so your opinion? You go Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Which, if you were a bored housewife in Beverly Hills, would you go to Gwyneth Paltrow's two thousand dollar club? <laughs> I would, and I'd be a total bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd walk in with stink face, be like, "This is it. This is that it, dumb bitch. <sighs> that Hooters and Burbank is better." <laughs> I would be can't awful. stand it here. Oh my god, with cocaine in my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> it was heroin. Where but am I? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be amazing. Uh, it'd be awful. It, it would be fun to experience, but I don't know that I could live in myself if I went to a place like that. <laughs> I, I don't. Like I said, she I'm, would kill you on sight, Chris Apollo. Why? She would see the poverty in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't belong here. <laughs> don't shoot till you see the poverty in their eyes. <laughs> you don't make money. Kill him. <laughs> That's what happened. She has a firing squad outside <laughs> guarding the place. And they would probably cook you and eat you in the club. Yeah. Yes. They might. Yeah. At that price range, they better be serving something rare. And Chris right? Abala like, is hey pretty guys, rare. Hey, human flesh of let poor me, people. It's amazing. Let me tell you, ladies. Mm, rare. Anyway. Are you telling the ladies in the world to eat you? Ow. I, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> If anyone wants to offer, look, tweet me at Chris Abalo and uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, send a picture and proof of age. Thank you. <laughs> you should be my publicist. I think I found the job because you're cracking up. So obviously I'm hilarious. Sometimes. And you're, and you're looking out for my well-being. Uh, I, I am, you know. What I, I have to say. I'm, at a recent STD test. You did? No. Oh, oh you mean for, for that? You. Oh, sorry. I, wow, Abalo. My mind is a flutter. Jesus. <laughs> what do you, what are you into? What do you what are you attracted to? Boys. Well, no shit. <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I got a second. <laughs> this is a revelation. <laughs> what no no, I'm I'm curious. I'm honest. Like, what do you what are you into? What are you attracted to? In terms of like daily Physical. everyday. Just, wait, let's, in, let's go superficial. With it, physical, because you're you're a single man. You are you know, talking like, about like dating? Or are you talking about like you know into in terms of hobbies? No, no, I'm so, I meant dating, like attracted oh. to, not like what are you into? Like I really, I, I like scrapbooking and um, stamps. Yeah, um, Audible.com. Anyway, um, that's super sexy, guys. Is Audible.com? Audible trial. Audible trial. dot com slash cape. That'll get you on Norman's good side and mine, frankly. Anyway, no, what? what? I'm, I'm curious. My taste. Your type. Well, let me tell you my, my celebrity crush. Okay. That will give everyone a better insight rather than like just describing it. There are a few, but give us one there to start. There are a couple. Uh, my number one, right as of right now, Lee Pace. Okay. He's so hot, tall, manly. Oh, my God. <laughs> How would you think of that guy? Um... Of course, Henry Cavill, yes. because, you know, 
<laughs> We've talked about it. Why not? It's been mentioned. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and Matt Bomer, he is not my type. He's Matt Bomer is not my type whatsoever, but he's so beautiful, I can't say no. <laughs> oh, you heard it here. <laughs> Matt Bomer's you listening. You see, you're like, no, Matt Bomer. Then you're like, ah, whatever you want to do, it's fine. He's, he's a good looking dude. I probably wouldn't say he's no, beautiful. for being honest. He's, he's what Ken, did, the Barbie doll, the Ken wants to be. He's a dark haired Ken. He is. Raven haired Ken. Better. But, you know, I prefer bigger, same height. Certain to tall, muscular white dudes. I am. Okay. I am. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'm sure you had that figured out already, but just for the sake of no bringing twinks. anyone up. No to twinks, speak. guys. No twinks. Yeah, what we, we were talking about this last week. What is it you're classified as? I, I drove you back from the show last week. I drove you home because you were fucking hammered. But anyway... <laughs> I was unhammered. What, you, I had one bottle of wine. What are you considered in the gay community? You were explaining this in the car. I believe I'm considered an otter. That sounds vaguely racist as well. An otter. Why? Like what? Explain. Because I don't know what. What does that mean? An otter. Like is I know the, a I, bigger male. Okay. But I'm in the, I'm between a bear and a jock. Where I'm not muscular, but I'm not like big either. Mm -hmm. I don't have very much hair on me, so I'm an otter. That's interesting. Oh wait! Oh my God! <laughs> what, bear, uh, gay culture. Okay, you are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Cheyenne just pulled up the Wikipedia page for bear. I, I know what a bear is. I know what a twink is. Otter. That an was otter, the first time I heard an otter. Otter is in between a bear and a jock, and a jock is someone that's muscular but well, not too muscular. So with a super because there's muscular and then jock. So jock's more fit. Gotcha. Ah. Gay men, are you a jock, otter, bear, or wolf? What's a, what's a wolf? <laughs> a wolf is somebody like super hairy. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes more sense to me than the otter thing. <laughs> I, I had to ask anyway, but once again, middle America wants to know, Norman. I'm an otter. Hey, guys. You are the I'm gate. An otter. You are the gateway to the gay community. Oh. You're welcome to read the description. Oh, my gosh. No, you can, please read. Oh, in a woman's voice, it's going to sound way better than in my voice. Go ahead. Pipe yourself in and let's oh hear gosh, it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. So I pulled up the web page and it says, in the gay world, an otter would be considered a thin gay male that is hairy and may or not use the thinner trimmer to shorten body hair. Some have beards, some do not. Otters are usually smaller in frame when compared to the heavier cub or bear. Otters look a lot like what you would see in a picture of an otter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not flattering at all. They are hairy. They they are hairy. A person can be an otter regardless of age. Otters are considered to be a part of the larger bear community, and the example they give is Scott Can. Scott <laughs> Scott Con. Con. C A A N. Yeah. Okay. Who the hell? Yeah. Who the hell's that? He's on well, Hawaii. I'm, Pull up an IMDb for Scott Con, please. <laughs> so Norman Norman can judge if he's a uh, an otter. Anyway, I'm not a bear. I'm not no, a twink. no, you're not a bear. I'm not a jock. Not a twink. Now, now, not a muscle. Now, twink is an is an age oriented uh, classification. This is it's, it's, really. young, it's well, not I young men. Twink is more younger, skinny guys. Okay. What do you call an old twink? What is that? Uh, oh, Avengers. Uh, old oh, wait. wait, what is it? I don't know. Oh, that's an ad. That's oh, probably they, an ad. Okay. But it's all across his face. <laughs> That out. But I saw, it, I saw his face though. I saw are. his face. Well, hey, there we go. How about that? Are you an otter? That's... Based based on Scott Con, <laughs> would you say you're otterish? I'm closer in body type to him than a bear. Okay, gotcha. Is he an attractive man? He is, but he's short. He's is like he? five, six or something. Well, we can't have that. Listen, I I can't look down. I understand. I don't, don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have that. I mean, I can't because I've never dated a girl taller than me. I'm six feet tall. So you like hasn't it. hasn't happened yet. I'm 6'1". I can't. No, I understand. That's what I'm saying. I, I get it from your perspective because you would prefer they be taller than you. I feel like this le eye level. Like, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Lee Pace is like 6'7", isn't he? He's huge. Oh, he's like 6'3". He's beautiful. Um, I thought he was way. I thought he was way taller than that. Actually, okay. 
He's I easy. didn't know that. Halt and Catch Fire is coming to Netflix, though. I saw that and thought of you Ugh. because he's on that show. I'm going to watch it. I've never I'm, seen I'm really it. bad at new shows. I'm really bad. I can only watch two or three shows at a time. I don't, I don't know anything about it other than that he's in it. Oh, I, I know he's his butt. What? <laughs> My friend tells me all well, about we're, it. Well, we're not pulling that up now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Leave his ass. No. Yeah. They, will, they will require an age restriction if we do that. We're not going to do that. But you can look Just it up in your own time. If you folks want to look everybody, up everybody, picture's by right now. Or if you can picture Lee. Oh, if people don't know Ronan from Guardians of the Galaxy, you couldn't tell it was him under all that makeup and the costume. I could. I knew. Well, you could, well that's the only reason you <laughs> wanted to see the movie. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, Lee Pace. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord of the Rings. That's right. He was in Lord of the Rings. That's the only reason I watch those movies. Really? Did long blonde hair do it for you? Or yeah. No? Really? It's Lee Pace, his voice. Is I, like, I have a question, and uh, I'm asking because you're an objective. Actually, frankly, out of the, the group, out of the, let's say the, we still didn't come up with a name for ourselves. That went nowhere <laughs> last week. But uh, out of you and I, Candace and John, you're the only one among us who's, who's into guys. So frankly, I need to ask you. <laughs> I was reading an article in uh, Men's Health this week, or on their website, rather, about um, men shaving their legs. Where do you stand on that? And I'm just asking you personally. This isn't me suggesting this is how the gay community feels, just if anybody's um, feeling offended. I don't care. Really? It doesn't matter to me. Hmm. Like, you don't care I between natural tr nice legs. trimming and shaved? Yeah. I mean... Leg man? What? Are you a leg man? Is that your thing? I do like legs. Okay. But I don't care. About you, well, that you, you've like, complained about it. Like it's like if... I don't want too much hair. I don't want... If it's like, you know... You don't want a wolf. A bear. I'm like, you need to, you need to fix that. Don't touch me. Go somewhere, have it waxed. <laughs> I don't want any of that. But I'm not, I don't really care too much about the hair though. It's not a big deal. Okay. You can do whatever you want. That was, that was the response. The minority was women who like men with shaved, like completely shaven, which I think would be weird. That's, I mean, I know guys who are, who are athletes or who are swimmers or things like that, who, they, who they did like for, it, yeah. yeah, for, for athletic reasons or guys who shave their arms for the same reason. Ah, uh, that seems like too much of a commitment for me. It hasn't really been that big because the hair on guys is kind of a natural thing. So I'm like, yeah. whatever, do what you want. It's so most of the hair on the back that gets me. What do you mean? Like if it's a sweater? If it's like, yeah, I, I'm like confused by it. Like as I get older, I'm like, I don't care. It's fine. But <laughs> you're going to start sprouting hair on like, your back. I'm like, don't you say that. You will. It's fuck you, Apollo. It's awful. I will Listen. go. To it's, a waxer. It's not You're out of control. No, but it's, don't say that. It's disgusting. I will it, never have hair on my back. Don't, don't. Listen, don't. I wish somebody told me when I was 18, you probably are just, this is, you're closing in on your peak. Don't. But it's going to go you? downhill. What do you mean? Closing in on my peak? No, I'm saying I wish someone had spoken to me when I was 18 and said, listen, this is, you're, you're, you're lean and uh, you're, you, you do okay. As far as look, <laughs> look wise, because you're slender and you're a you're a good guy, but things are going to change because you know how people get older. Yeah, it's going to happen to you. You too. would not have listened. You'd be like, you're an asshole. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. you say those things to me. I kind of wish I'd sent myself an anonymous note. If I could, I wonder if I would have done that. No, for the past like, or for the listen. future, you're like, what the fuck? An anonymous this note. Future. This is from someone who cares about you. You just need to know. <laughs> That after 27, <laughs> man, it's going to be like going down the, the hill of a roller coaster. Listen, be bad news. I have no hair in my back. I'm turning 30. You're still in your 20s. I'm That's doing why. good. It's going to happen. Shut up, Bob. Uh, Don't I, say those things to you're me. You're going to assume I'm putting a hex on you, but I swear you I'm not. You are putting a hex on me. If no. I get a senior hair in my back, I will kill you. All right. Fair. <laughs> Has nothing to do with genetics. It's all my fault, but it is. sure. You witch. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> we haven't heard from John yet, huh? He hasn't called in. No. He's, <laughs> you he's, say he's, shit, he's John. roofied. That's what the problem is. I had. <laughs> listen, we're, we're. Even if he doesn't call in, if for some reason he forgot or, or fell asleep or, you know. Then I will never forgive him. Stupor, I will never forgive him. Let me tell you about an embarrassing moment I had actually during with the John? Week. No. Oh. <laughs> I can embarrass myself without John's help, <laughs> for the record. Uh, I was in my car, and I was uh, pulling into a parking lot, going into a store, and I was listening to the Adam Carolla show. And Joe Coy was the guest. The Wait, hilarious Joe Coy. Love Line? No, no, no. His show, his his daily podcast. Uh -oh. I was listening to it on my, on my iPod. Uh -oh. And uh, it was just at the moment they... 
well, whatever they were talking about. And then uh, Joe Coy was the guest, says... And it was a nice day because it was a nice week. It was topped out at like 84. So I was driving out the window open and everything. Yeah. And I'm, I probably shouldn't have had the volume as, it wasn't blaring, but it was probably a little louder than it should be if you're listening to, to essentially talk radio. Maybe turn the volume down on this, folks. <laughs> Just, you know, heads up. And uh, as I'm pulling in the spot, Joe Coy says, yeah, and I was watching this porno and this guy's getting a blowjob. And to my right, the car next to me, Hot girl, window down, turns and gives me a look like I just told, like I knew something dirty about her mother. It was really embarrassing. I didn't respond at all. I just, I, I saw her, <laughs> I turned my head and just kind of noticed her look of disgust and just turned back around like nothing happened. But I was like, man, that was just bad timing. One of those moments that you just kind of wish, Ugh, can you believe it? Is that embarrassing? Just to, to have is, the is thing. Is that embarrassing? Well, it doesn't bother me because I'll never see her again. At least odds are I'll never see her again. Like a blowjob. But <laughs> but just the fact that all she heard was a man's voice saying, I was watching a porn and this guy's getting a blowjob and turns around and sees that I'm listening to that. Mm, yeah, it was just it was just timing. It's just silly and I'm laughing about it. But man, that was that was pretty embarrassing. I got to say could have been worse. It could have been way worse. They could have been watching the porn and critiquing it. And then that really would have been bad. Timing. This could have been a better story. Wow. Well, let's hear. You're the one who's like, I don't like anyone's stories. Let's hear a story from you then. I don't have anything set up right now for a story. Wait a minute. You have experiences. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Jesus. You just like pissing on everyone else's stories. <laughs> That's Norman's thing. If it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> that wasn't me. That's the soundboard. Couldn't help it. Your monster. A story in, in terms of what? What do you mean? I, I just said a funny story. Clock's ticking now, so we're going to have to go that out That wasn't funny. Something. That was awful. I didn't say it was funny. I just said it was an embarrassing moment I had. That was... I never said it was going to be a laugh riot. All I said was, it's in one of those moments, it had that had to be said. I was pulling up next to somebody. Had it been anybody, had it been a, a, a housewife with three kids in the car, it still would have been embarrassing. Here's the story then. Um, okay. <laughs> You know, the story like sucks, Norman. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, me and you used to work in a place yes. where we had to like talk constantly. Yes. And it gets to a time where you, you say things again and again and again that you just say things. You go on autopilot. You go, you go on autopilot. Like you press play and your other part of your brain just walks away. And you're like, whatever. Yeah. Things are happening. But sometimes the disc skips and <laughs> things come out. And you're like, oh, just keep going. And there's a certain part where we're supposed to say cities. And there's a, I have people with me of different ages. And I'm saying cities, instead of saying cities, I say titties. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, guys, titties. Like, really loud. <laughs> and I have a split second to go, should I fix this? I'm like, no, keep going. <laughs> and coming from you, they were really confused. And I was oh, like, I am not going to acknowledge this. Why am I going to talk about it again? Like, hey, guys, titties. <laughs> follow me. <laughs> Let's go. How is that even on that guy's mind? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand at all. <laughs> titties, guys, titties. <laughs> um, and I was like, I'm not going to. No, I'm not okay, talking so about this anymore. My experience wasn't as embarrassing. So I, <laughs> I now understand why you're so unimpressed with what I had to say. <laughs> All right, we're we're uh, we're running out of time and we haven't heard from John, unfortunately. Aw, John, you asshole. Although he can still call in. No, and I'll say, find you, John. I'll put you in the ball. And say goodnight and tuck our listeners in. That'd no, be nice with his what? His dirty, roofy hands? <laughs> Over Don't the phone? touch me, John. Not really. With his soothing voice. With his nasty beard. Wait, mustache. He doesn't really have a beard. He's a, yeah, but he, he kind of, he, he was down kind of, he just had stubble kind of last week. Don't help week. him. Not helping him, it's fact. No. We have video footage, uh, an hour of him without a beard. I don't like it. Should he be clean shaven? I don't like his face. At all? No. With or without a beard? Uh, Bad news. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, that's interesting. All the guys you mentioned you have crushes on are, are clean shaven. At least the majority of the time. Beard's not your thing? I guess not. I mean, beards are cool sometimes. Game of Thrones. What? Um, <laughs> it depends on the person. <laughs> well, next we have to talk about your taste in ladies. No, because we're out of time, but I will tell you my guilty pleasure. 
Oh, yeah. Well, we, go we, we were going to go over this. Okay. Just say it, say it's, it, say it. It's something I noticed uh, during the week, like you guys said. See if there's anything that happens, and then you kind of point it out. Uh, not crazy embarrassing, but I've noticed I will find myself kind of killing time walking around a mall. Like, I, not to, didn't go there for anything. Don't have any real reason to be there. I'll go walk around and still leave with nothing, but I will have killed two hours for no good reason. That's, I say that's a that's kind of a guilty pleasure that's because I just stupid. go in. There. Well, yours was anime, and you love anime. I hate so. you so much. I will go and waste time <laughs> somewhere. Like an old person, why are you doing this? <laughs> That's your guilty pleasure. I don't have a pedometer, but that was that was the thing I found so myself much. doing this week. That I went in and I was just walking around. What? <laughs> Did you have a uh, fanny pack with you? No, you I was just around the mall. I was just window shopping. I hate you. <laughs> no, you don't. Not at all. <laughs> I can't believe you. That's what I get. <laughs> And with that, we're out of time. <laughs> Sorry, not talking about my taste in ladies this week, folks. Uh, next Apologies. time. Apologies, <laughs> maybe next time. Uh, Norman will be back in uh, two weeks on uh, April 20th with Candace and John as well. What? So. I thought it was just me. Crave some more Norman. No, it's not. That was just, <laughs> This was a one-time deal. If I filled my quota, we're, we're done. <laughs> you and I are done. You've done nothing but criticize me for the last 56 minutes. You could, it's a long walk back to North Hollywood, man. You were Damn playing you. with fire. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your walk home in the rain. You son of a bitch. It's gonna rain tomorrow too. <laughs> you're freaked out, and so is everybody else. I won't be in a car tomorrow. It's gonna yeah, you'll be in the rain because you'll be walking. <laughs> I'll be safer. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Well, if somebody skids off the road, you you might be fucked. Thanks a lot. Because people Abala. can't drive. Well, look, I'm not wishing it on you. I'm just saying people can't drive in the rain. Once again, here. which. Trying to hex me. May you, me. may your hair, sp uh, may your back <gasps> sprout hairs. Ha <laughs> ha. That's right. I said it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Just uh, end the show. <laughs> we will. Once again, everybody, if you want to support the show, audibletrial.com slash cape. Get your free audiobook download. Get your free 30 day membership to check out their service. You can't follow Norman on social media because he's invisible on social media. Leave so. me alone. Yeah, you're going to have to leave him alone. Yes. But uh, follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Kate Pod. And like the show on Facebook once again. And email the show, CapeThePodcast at gmail.com. And uh, follow me at Chris Abalo on Twitter. And Chris sells out on Instagram. And tune in every Monday night, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, SkidRoastDews.com. Subscribe on iTunes as well. So until next time for... Norman Trotter, this is Chris Abalo, and this was yet another experiment.